Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. I am going to unbox this new set of watercolors that I purchased off Amazon, um, and a review will follow. Hopefully, I don't lose this footage. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm filming. I'm filming this the day after. This actually came in the mail last night. Um, I am filming this the day I got it, so because it looked pretty, I'm like, oh, I'll unbox it, and hopefully. I won't lose the footage by the time I actually get the review done, which will be probably, it'll take me a while to get the review squared away, but um, I'm excited to paint with this today, and I decided I would just do an unboxing as well. Now this arrived in a bubble mailer, I ordered it off Amazon last week, and I paid about 20, it was 21 something, I think it was about, with tax, about 22 or 23 dollars. Um, got a magnetic closure, pretty yellow box. I love boxes that I can reuse. A bunch of writing in Chinese. Owen Shanghai, Owen Painting Materials Company Limited. They are, I believe, the same company that makes a Paul Rubens um, product. So we've got some nice thick postcards here. That's really cool. I'm gonna have to do some paintings on those because that actually looks like a decent watercolor paper. Now this one is dented, but I mean, I didn't buy it for the postcards, but just to let you know there. They're perforated. We'll be able to tear them apart to use them. We have got, oh, we've got our, oh, the little ones to open there. We've got our tin. It's in a flocked tray. There's a hair in there, but you know, it looks like a cat hair, so <laughs> I'm not going to be completely sure that I didn't transfer that in there opening it up. Uh, so we got a little flocked tray. Often the Paul Rubin stuff has like a, a, like a microfiber cloth. That's kind of nice. That'd be a nice way to store it, especially since it is kind of got a, it kind of has a domed top. So, you know, stacking them, it may, like if you stack your palettes, if you've got a hoard like I do, um, you know, sometimes you don't stack it very well. Opens very easily. Oops. So that might be, well, it opens up very easily, but I can see how it might not want to stay closed. So the tin doesn't seem to be, the uh, the highest thickest quality. It's also fairly large. Let me see. I think I have a. I think I have my, one of my 24 inch tins here, just to show you a little bit of scale. I've got my. Um, this is just like a generic 24 tin. I have my my Turner watercolors in. So that's the size of a generic kind of like if you go and you buy the 20 like a an empty tin on Amazon, or if you buy like a set of 48 colors. So let's just see. That one is considerably larger for 36 half pans. So just to let you know, it's, it's a bit bigger. And that might be why it feels a little flimsier because they've stretched the, uh, see that? They've stretched that out a bit. So here we've got our, yep, this is definitely from the Paul Rubens company. We got the same uh, scientists there that are in the same chemists that are in all of their brochures. And uh, we have got information here. We've got light fastness, color numbers. The color numbers are the same as a pretty excellent paint, so that's a reason why I wanted to check that out. That's why I bought it actually, because I love the pretty excellent paints. And these are in their own half pans, so I thought that would be really nice to have. Um, and they were pretty affordable, so I'm not sure. The 24 set and the 36 set were both priced at 21 something, the same exact price. So I don't know if they're gonna reduce the price of the 24 set or increase the price of the 36 set, but why would you buy the 24 set if the 36 is the same price? I don't know. Um, so we've got that. We also have a watercolor paper chart, which is nice. So how do they arrange that? Hopefully, Oh, good. It's arranged in the same format of the paints. I love that. Awesome. That's good. That's going to save me some time making a swatch chart. And this is also a uh, shrink wrap. So let's pull that out. Ah, can I get it out without... Oh my. Can I get this out? Ah, here we go. So it comes with a little insert. And so you've actually just got a, you've got a plain tin in here which is kind of nice with the, uh, you could mix on both sides, but the thing that's kind of nice about this, you've got all this extra space. You could put extra pans. I could take my makeup. Well, let's, let's open this before we get too carried away. Let's just open this up. Okay, these are shrink wrapped and these pans look a little bit different size than my typical half pan. So let's compare what they look like. So I'm just going to grab one of my pans out of here. Um, I do have some that are, well, I've got, uh, these are just pans that I purchased that I pulled myself. And let's compare them. This is a standard half pan. 
let's take one of these guys out and see. So the, uh, these Owen, or yeah, these Owen paints are, the pans are wider. They're the same height, so they fit in the standard trays, but they are a little bit wider. If I hold them there, you can see. They are a smidgen? Oh, are they even? Maybe a smidgen shallower than a standard half pan. Here, you decide. I don't know. It looks... I don't know. Are they? These are... This one's tapered. So it's kind of hard to tell. I think maybe a smidgen or maybe not. They look like they might be a smidgen. Not really that much different, I don't think, um, in depth. And... Oh, you know what you want to do? Anytime you have these, you want to bend the things down first and then snap them in. I actually like a little bit more space because it's easier for, uh, for me to get a brush in. That's why I like the colors that I use a lot. I actually put it in full pans because I want to be able to get a bigger brush in there. So, um, so I don't mind that at all. Uh, yeah, so you've got all this space. So if I wanted to like take other pans and add them in, or I actually took... Um, I cleaned out some makeup palettes. I could even fit like extra colors in if I wanted to do that. I think that's kind of, that would be kind of cool. I could put some extras in there if I wanted to. I'm probably not going to. This is probably a pretty well-rounded palette, but I just like the options. So, um, so there we have it. Uh, I got to swatch them. I'm going to compare them with my Pretty Excellence. What I think I'll do is I'll do some little paintings with the Pretty Excellent and then do paintings with this and see how they compare. But um, yeah, I'm excited. It comes with a little water brush pen, kind of your standard medium tip um, pen. We can fill that up. You should unscrew it the opposite way to open it up. We can do a few swatches together, I suppose. Why not? Why not? I got a quiet house today because... Uh, because the kids are at school, they got midterms, and I'm surprised the furnace hasn't <laughs> hasn't uh, started up. So let's see. How do I want to do this? Maybe put it in like that, and then you can see. Um, you know what? I'm gonna put a little mark of white of a uh, black where the white is, just so I can so I'll be able to see. I could also do. A line across so I'll be able to see how transparent these other colors are. I bet they are pretty transparent because oops, um, because they look so dark in the pans so they probably don't have very much in the way of fillers. Uh, I need to let that dry. Let me let that dry and then we'll be back to do a little swatching. I actually went and grabbed my pretty excellent paints and the layout seems to be identical between the sets. Um, so this is what this tin looks like. It's a, a fair deal smaller for the 36 colors, but instead of having individual half pans, you have, um, you have them all in like a molded plastic tray. I pull that out here, you can see how thick they are. They're pretty thick, I think. I mean, they're, they're, I've heard people say these are not equivalent to a half pan, but I disagree. I think they are. Um, I'm just going to grab out another, I'll grab out, this is a Turner half pan. Um, I think they're about the same. I don't know if I can get that little, uh, yeah, I don't think I can pry the paint out of there. I'm going to make a mess. Now I can't pry the paint out of there. But let me just pop out one of these. Oh, gosh. Can I? Look at that. Yeah, they're, look how big they are. They're, they're glued in, but they're very... Can you see that? Uh, maybe if I hold it against there. They're equivalent to a half pan, I would say. Some people say they're smaller. I disagree. They actually seem a little bit bigger width-wise than my Turner pan because they go all the way to the edges where that's plastic on that. So, um, or Lucas pen, I should say. Uh, so yeah, definitely, I would say equivalent, probably about the same amount of paint as we have in one of these, just maybe this, maybe these were a little bit more shallow. Let me see. Let me take out that. Okay. That one I just popped out, or if I do. And this is so scientific. I would say 
probably about the same depth, though there's no plastic, so probably a little bit more. Maybe, maybe just a touch more in these, but I don't know because I think these might not be quite as thick because some of these don't seem to be filled all the way to the top, and these are definitely flush to the top. I'd say the exact same amount. So I'm really, I'm really curious to swatch these out and see how they compare with my Pretty Excellence because if they're the same paints, I'm going to be happy because that's the reason I bought these because I wanted to review them. Uh, because I know a lot of people complain they love this paint, but they don't love the, the, the cheap plastic insert. They'd rather have individual half pans. And um, and this comes in three different colors. This only comes in the teal. So I figured I would uh, I would take them for the team. And plus they were always cheap enough. I would give it a give it a try. So let's do some swatching here. I've got my rag for wiping my water brush off. I usually don't use a water brush, but I'm gonna add a few drops of water to that. Um, to that white panel, let that sit for a bit. It's so hard to get this all in camera. Maybe if I turn it that way, that will probably make the most sense. And, oh, they reactivate very well. I didn't pre-spray this or anything. It reactivates extremely well. I guess I don't need to go so, uh, so aggressively. These appear to be liquid poured. Nice and transparent. I need to, uh, seat these in a little bit better meaning like push the the, the uh, thingies down and then snap them back in see they're moving around that's annoying can you see that okay yeah very transparent beautiful colors oh I'm pleased I'm pleased with my purchase I like this larger tin um, even though it is a bit on the flimsy side uh, I I like it because I could actually use poster putty if I wanted to take this tray out and I could adhere those down and add other paints to it. Um, I got no qualms. All right, I'm gonna swatch the rest of these and then um, we'll be back at some point in the future to compare them with the Pretty Excellent. So I can see why they shrink wrap this because um, this one did pop out of the pan, uh, probably just to make sure that you don't have a big mess and have a bunch of little, um, you know, squares of paint floating around. So I do appreciate that. I just thought I'd mention that since I know um, nobody likes excess packaging, but I could see how, you know, that's that's probably why. Um, even with liquid pour pan, pans, when they dry out, they can, you know, you can have them a little bit loose. That's how you, that's how you um, get them in there nice and snug so they don't dance around on you. You push the, uh, the fingers back to open it up then you pull them forward so that you make them a little too small and then you just put the uh, the plastic pan against the rail and you snap it in and you hear that beautiful snap and that's going to keep them in place so I'm just going to do that before I um, swatch all these just so that I have I don't want them dancing around because I don't like that that's very annoying and I see a lot of people that will just put poster putty or they'll put magnets on the back of their pans when they've got a pan holder like this so obviously it's not very, people don't know, a lot of people don't know that you need to, you need to um, do this. I don't know why they don't do that in the factory. I'm sure it just probably takes extra time and they don't want to, you know, it's just one more thing to add to the price. So, um, so, you know, but even with expensive sets, I've had to do that. So, you know, like this one looks like it might've fallen off and then been put back in because I see the little, the little round, the little round up. Uh, imprint from the bottom of the pan. Not a big deal. I'm not, I'm not uh, this little bit of paint on the outside, they, obviously they don't fill these in the pans. They fill them separately and then put them in the pans afterwards. All right, this is dull. I will be back when I've got my swatch card filled out. All right, I've swatched this. I also did a glaze so you could see what they are looking like. Sorry for the camera wiggle. I need to tighten up the mount on my ceiling. But anyway, uh, yeah, uh, gorgeous color selection. They glazed really well. Um, no problems here. And then I want to compare them with the uh, Pretty Excellent swatches. So I've got my Pretty Excellent swatch here. This is the one that came with the uh, with the set, so it's on their um, their paper. So let's just compare here. Identical color numbers. We've got three, four, six, three, four, six, one, oh nine, one, oh nine, two, six, eight, two, six, eight. I mean, identical. 
that's pretty that's pretty crazy um and honestly that's why i bought this because i was um i really like the the uh, pretty excellent paint and i thought Man, to find these again in a different format, I just thought that was great, especially with something like this where you could take the pans out, put them in a smaller palette, take out just the colors you need. Um, occasionally, I'll have students who take my online courses that are looking for an affordable set of paints, so I recommend the Pretty Excellent, And um, but you can't take the paints out, therefore they're in a molded one tray. These, you could actually go in and pull out the nine colors you would need and then not get confused by the others. So. Um, so I really like that. I really like that a lot. Um, they put light fastness information on the swatches, which they do not do in the pretty excellent one. I think it's on the back of the box, if I recall. Let's see, I've got the, this is the box from pretty excellent. Yeah, they have those, um, that information is on the box and the pretty excellent, but I mean, it's the same company and I, I was, I, I'm, yeah, the same parent company. So I was pretty, Pretty excited to see that. Same number, same paint, same everything. Um, I did do, on better paper, I did a swatch to go inside my tin of the Pretty Excellent. And they do look a little more vibrant on this color, but that's also, you know, a, a cotton watercolor paper versus, you know, whatever this stuff is. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I was very, very happy to see that. So, but I also wanted to put that out there because if you have the Pretty Excellent paints, you know, you're going to be, if you buy this, you're buying them again, essentially. So keep people that are curious from buying them if they don't want them or show them what they are in case, you know, in case you do want them, I guess. So uh, taking a look at the light fastness information here. Um, now, Kim Crick has a YouTube channel and a blog, and she did a light fast test on this paint, on the pretty excellent paint. And, um, and they actually, the paints fared pretty well. But I was looking at the light fastness key down here and it says three stars is absolutely permanent, two is moderately durable, and one is fugitive. And so let's see, most of these have three stars uh, and then two stars, but some of the ones that have the three stars I'm a little concerned with like Purple Lake, that has a three stars, that doesn't seem like a color that would be all that durable, maybe it's PV19, that, that's alright. Um, but they have mauve as being very permanent and that looks, looks almost like a PV3 which isn't but it doesn't give me the information So I'm just guessing and Doxazine Violet only has a two star generally. That's a fairly permanent color um, Ultramarine has three yellow ochre raw sienna burnt sienna all the browns except for Van Dyke Brown They have three stars So nothing really other than the purples nothing's really like jumping out at me as like a red flag that must be an alizarin crimson hue if it's got three stars, which it looks like. It doesn't look like that kind of bloody alizarin crimson like the PR83 does. But um, yeah, I, I like that they're that, they're that forthright with, um, with information, and I like that there's a swatch card included. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with this. So far, so good. Now, um, I will do some paintings, like I mentioned before, and I will have those in other videos that you can find on my channel. And then I will come back with a uh, final thoughts on these paints, and um, and that will be that. So we'll see you in a little bit. It'll be in the future for me, but it'll be a few seconds for you. Okay, past Lindsay here again. One thing I wanted to try, because the lid was so loose, I wanted to try bending this a little bit. So what I did was I pushed, just very, with my fingers, just pushed that in and pulled the bottom edges out a little bit. It was a little, it is a little warped. It is a little wonky. Not serious, not a serious problem. I think, just think it's so big and there's not like much structural going on there. Um, there's no exposed pin in the hinge either. So um, it just kind of wants to pop, you know what I mean? But I think by, by doing this, it's going to make it like latch there see it's got it's it's not falling open like it kind of was before so i think that's going to be helpful i had something else i wanted to compare and i like how there's all this extra room to like throw brushes and stuff in there too even this honkin one would fit in there like i could have that and like a um and like a couple other brushes in there without any issues which is kind of nice uh, especially if you want like something to sit on your desk and you've got a couple brushes and you want to just kind of put it away 
So there, that's holding together much better just by bending the edges. You might not have that issue if you get this tin, but I just wanted to mention it. But then I realized that this tin looked really familiar. And so I remembered this Paul Rubens set of 24 full pans. And I thought, gee, I'm gonna check those against the numbers of these because the paint did seem kind of similar too. Um, but I'm like, I think I would have noticed that before if it was the same as the pretty excellent numbers, um, especially because it's the same parent company. Um, so no, there was no common um, numbers, but one thing I did notice on these and the Sonnet paints from um, White Knights, they have the exact same numbers and they swatch identical. I, I went over that when I reviewed this set, but this set, I felt, I felt like this tin felt a little bit sturdier. It, I think it's the same, except for the fact that this has a ring on the bottom and little divots and this one doesn't. And I think it's like things like those little divots that actually just provide a little structure because like this just feels a little thinner and flimsier, but it's essentially the same exact palette. So um, I just want to show you that. It's just a, another comparison. This set of 24, 24 full pans is, um, I think it's right around the same price, around like between 20 and $24, depending on what kind of deal they have going on. They have their own individual full pans, but they, and then they sit inside of a molded plastic case. So you could put them you know, in another palette if you wanted to, or you could leave them in there. But I, I just thought that was interesting because it's essentially the same the same thing. Now, light fast wise, I don't think this set was as good as the, um, as the, the pretty excellent Owen ones, but I haven't done a test myself, but, um, and I think this goes on a different, this goes on a different scale too, I think, but, um, but anyway, I just thought I would share that because they're the same tin, just different paints in there, but but similar. So anyway, packaging isn't quite as nice. It comes in just a, a sleeve, like a thin cardboard sleeve with a couple of corrugated pieces in there for cushioning. Just I thought was kind of interesting to, uh, to mention before I go on to doing some more paintings and things like that with this. Okay, my desk is such a mess right now, but I have finished up the uh, stuff for this review. Uh, thank you for being patient. I hope you've been enjoying this different type of review. But since I basically feel like I've reviewed these products before when I did the Pretty Excellent review a couple of years ago, um, one of my favorite budget student sets, and maybe my best budget pick for student sets, um, I feel like I, this should be something a little bit different. So let's look at some artwork I did with both. Now, the only difference I could really find between the paint quality and the Pretty Excellent and the um, Owen watercolors would be the white. The white in the Pretty Excellent I found was more opaque and a little more cool undertoned, and the white in the Pretty Excellent was much more translucent, I mean, in the uh, Owen, was much more translucent and a little bit warmer, kind of dirtier looking actually, and didn't really, wasn't really a benefit. So um, probably for like, it's probably gonna be useful for like mixing pastels when you wanna keep the viscosity up of the paint, but you don't really want it to get opaque. Um, so that's probably what I would use that for, mixing white, whereas the Pretty Excellence white actually did have some opacity to it. Um, overall though, use, layering, whatnot, I found them to be the same. Again, this was the Pretty Excellent, this was the Owen, and then I did a little um, landscape. Oh my, my space is such a mess right now. This is the Pretty Excellent, this is the Owen. Um, I found them to be very similar. I think they're the same paints. In use, it does seem like these were getting used up a little bit quicker, but um, they're also a little bit wider of a pan, but the same thickness. So maybe that, like, there might be like an extra drying or an extra pour on the Pretty Excellent pans, or maybe, you know, the, the, I'd say the Pretty Excellence just felt a little more dense, if that makes sense. Like, I, I barely have made a dent in any of these Pretty Excellent colors, and I feel like I've already started to make dents here, and some of them felt like they weren't completely filled all the way. However, they're about, they're the same thickness, but these pans are a little bit wider, so it could just be you're getting the same gram wise, the same amount of grams of paint, but there's just a little bit more spread out here. Uh, that would be my uh, my thoughts. So this has been selling for around $20. It's, it hasn't really gone up in price since I got mine in 2017. I think I bought mine for $20. I have seen them go on sale for as low as $15 or $16. And this was, as far as I know, the first time it ever showed up on Amazon, it was $21.99, I think. Um, 
and they had the 24 set and the 36 set priced the same. So I don't know if they made a mistake and were pricing the 36 set too low or the 24 set too high. We'll have to see when they restock because they did sell out of the yellow tin ones. Um, so we'll have to see how the, the price fluctuates by the time this video goes up. Um, I didn't clean my palette here because I just wanted to show you the beading or non-beading. I didn't do anything special to clean this palette, um, but I do find that with metal, with metal like enamel tins, if you do wash them with dish, dish soap or even wipe them down with a magic eraser, it does stop the beading problem, but I really didn't have too much beading. Up here where I had it really watered down, um, I did get some beading, but it wasn't anything to really dissuade me from painting with it. One thing that does dissuade me a little bit is the fact that this it doesn't really, and it's not a huge deal, but it, it, first of all, it's kind of big on my desk. My desk is really messy right now because I've had so many different things out lately. Um, I did pick up yesterday, but anyway, it's a mess. Um, it's not sitting flat on my desk, and I mean, it's that, that warping is a little annoying. Is it enough for me not to recommend the set? No, and I don't know if yours would necessarily warp. If you purchase a set, um, let me know if yours warps or not. Maybe there's a way that I can just kind of bend it a little bit and make it, because it was doing that before I bent the um, the things to make it latch more securely. Um, I'm wondering if maybe there's something with the hinge, maybe the hinge isn't on straight, I don't know. But um, that warping is a little bit annoying and it is a pretty big footprint, so looking at the pretty excellent, Look at that, that's quite a bit smaller. So if you're limited for space, I definitely would go for this one. I think the big advantage to this palette here is just the fact that you've got individual pans that you could put in another tin if you wanted to, that you could rearrange if you don't like the layout, or you could, um, uh, you know, you could take this whole insert out and you could put way more pans in the bottom if you wanted to. So you just have a little more flexibility with this tin. With this one, not so much because you've kind of got to keep them in this, or you've got to purchase a half pan and, and stick the paint in there, which is an extra expense, and here it's all included. Um, half pans can range anywhere from 10 to 75 cents a piece, it's kind of crazy. Maybe even cheaper if you buy a big a big thing, but um, they both have white enameled uh, tins underneath, so it's just up to you. It's up to you with what you want. I'd say quality of the paint. I, I even think the amount of paint you get is identical, and the paint seems to be very comparable, identical to me. So it was, I, I'm glad that's why I bought it. I was hoping that would be this, the case, but um, if you already have those, unless you want this layout, unless you want more of those paints and with the half pans and everything, then uh, um, you know, then you might want you might want to skip it. It's completely up to you. I can see it both ways. So I did a couple little paintings here with the just with the AON paints. This one here, um, I just did this a uh, quick sketch with pen, and then I just started splashing on the paint. I could lift well on arches. I could also layer well, so you can do lifting and glazing. Over here, I just did a very quick cat. I kind of just started with the eye and just started working out from there. Um, nothing too fancy. I did a big background wash basically to carve back because I didn't sketch it on beforehand. So I was a little off with the proportions where the ears were and stuff. So I had to kind of go back in with a dark color and I thought it would be a good opportunity to test the salt. Salt worked fine. Um, and that was with Payne's Gray, Maroon or Mauve and, um, and some ultramarine blue. And uh, the salt worked great uh, with that. I don't have any qualms with this. I used a little gel pen on top that worked fine, um, and a little uh, a little pen, a little bit of the uh, just this, this India ink type of brush pen. Very compatible with everything else I use. Now you may be thinking, hmm, maybe I'll get these. Maybe you've been trying to think about what to invest with in paint. So here I'm going to go with the cons. The cons of of this, like these, I think these are the best value in student grade paints. To be honest. A lot of paints have come out um, over the past five years, a lot of inexpensive paints, and I really don't think you can get more for your money than, than these two sets of paints. But the downside with uh, with student paints, it, and it, it might not be very apparent until you've gotten some paintings under your belt, so if you're new, I wouldn't even really consider this too much. But the downside is that when you get these sets like this, um, they've got to cut, cut corners to bring the cost down. Uh, so they're not going to be using a lot of really um, high concentrations of really unique pigments and whatnot. And the consistency and the transparency of these sets tend to be pretty much the same. So you might get a like like that lavender-y color that has white added. So it's going to be a little more opaque and your, your yellow ochre naturally is a little more opaque and yellow ochre is a pretty cheap um, pigment to go to, to add to a set anyway. But for the most part, all your, all your colors are going to be very similar. 
you're going to have very similar transparency. You're going to have very similar pigment strength, um, which is probably easy if you're a beginner. But as, as you advance, you're going to want your paint colors to surprise you a little bit. You're going to want, you, you probably don't want the surprises when you're new. But as you, um, as you get to know the medium more, you're going to want paints that handle differently. You're going to want some paints that granulate. That ultramarine isn't very granulating. Um, a lot of the earth tones aren't really that granulating. They're all pretty transparent, similarly producing colors, kind of like ink. And um, and I don't know, I like to get one color and have it flow less than the other. I like that surprise when I pick up like a, that my Turner Ultramarine Blue Deep, that's going to granulate like crazy. I love that. And then I can grab, um, you know, Daniel Smith Cornacridone Rose and it's going to be super strong and, and, and transparent and I can grab core paints and it's, they're going to flow more. I like having those different, that, that variety in feel and personality in the colors. But you don't get that variety of personality with your student colors. So that's would be the only con and that is kind of across the board with a lot of student colors these days. Um, but really, I don't think you can beat it. Um, even for a travel set, I mean, look at that gorgeous corally color. Isn't that pretty? That's called Scarlet Lake, but to me, it almost looks like a, uh, a Quinn Coral. These the colors aren't as bright on their swatch card as they are on, like, Arches watercolor paper, but, um, but yeah, I think they're exactly like the pretty excellent, save for the white. Other than that, um, I recommend them. Just know, if you already have pretty excellent, you're, you've got the same palette. Essentially, you get the same palette of colors. This is just a different layout. I'm a little bummed that this palette isn't as nice as the Paul Rubens 24 student grade set that had the same exact tin. I'm going to see if I might be able to do something to straighten this out because I'm wondering if maybe the hinge was put on a little crooked. I don't know. It's um, That's my only qualm with this particular set and it's probably just my particular tin. You can let me know if you bought this set and, and you've got that same situation or not. But um, I also just really wanted a yellow tin. I don't know. I'm insane. But um, but I did know that people would be curious about this and before you spent your money on it, you can at least have an opinion over whether it's worth it or not. Um, I like the paints. I recommend them and uh, they were a lot of fun to work with. And I like these little postcards that they came with. I think that's kind of nice that they offered something like that. I probably will use these. I'll probably just mail them off to friends because why not? They weren't any artwork really to write home about except I could write home on them because they're postcards, right? Okay, well, that's that. I hope you enjoyed this. I don't think, I did film the rose tutorial and the fish, but I honestly don't think they're that great. So I'm probably not going to post those unless you guys have some compelling urge to see them. Let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, um, I'll just, you know, show it to you here. I didn't film the cat because I knew that was kind of experimental from the get-go and I didn't want the pressure of knowing it was being recorded. Um, but yeah, I give it a thumbs up. I give it a cautionary thumbs up just because, well, of the reasons I already gave you. I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you found it helpful. If you like my reviews, I would appreciate a thumbs up before you go. Share it with a friend who's getting into watercolors. They might be interested in one of these sets. And um, I'll have everything linked down below for your convenience. And they are affiliate links also. So if you do purchase through those links, I do earn a small commission without it costing you any more. So disclaimers are all out of the way. Thank you very much again for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.